I assume everybody can hear me all right. I tend to speak very quietly, so, all right. Seriously? Can you hear me? Good, thank you. Don't know if you're just trying to screw with me or what. All right, this is gonna get old real fast. Um, a little bit about me, I work with Harris Corporation. I'm a digital forensic analyst. Um, I work primarily in intrusion incidents, which means I work primarily with Windows. Um, I do a lot of the iOS Mac research for fun on the weekends at home at night. Um, I work with the feds, but I'm, I don't wear suits. I try to avoid it at all costs. Uh, I'm not one of those type of feds. And I'm not a hacker. I don't code. Couldn't program myself out of a box. Uh, I can't hack, and I don't exploit things. But I do like to get into things. If it's something that I can parse, if it's, is it a puzzle, does it contain data, I want to get into it. I'm a forensic nerd. The objectives here are basically security and privacy awareness. Um, going through a lot of these applications, and I'm uh, speaking specifically for third party applications, I found that there's a lot of private data in these and I want to at least let people know that they're there. Some people may already know that they're there and some people may not. Um, as a forensic investigator, this is important to me because it's something I can use in an investigation. As a user, it's important to you because this is your data. Um, and developers ought to know this because they're developing the apps. If they aren't being unsecure, they might want to have to secu uh, secure their products. And you might ask why this is just iOS. Um, I had plenty of apps to work with. I didn't want to go outside of Android, Blackberry, or Windows, but I would definitely love to do it in the future. If you sit through this presentation, these are the things you're gonna get. You're gonna get unencrypted passwords, unencrypted usernames, uh, contacts, pictures, documents, uh, personal documents, um, you know, conversations on AIM and Skype and all sorts of different things. And it's ridiculously easy to get this information. Uh, we all know that the, uh, the iPhones and iPads are out there. I'm sure many people in here have iPhones and iPads. Does anybody want to raise their hand and say, yes, I have them? And there's a bunch of liars in here. <laughs> um, we just, they just passed the 10 billion download um, you know, m mark, I guess. Um, so there's obviously being apps downloaded. I mean, it is prevalent. There's no, uh, no argument against that. Um, some recent stuff that might have some overlap with what I'm talking about here. Via Forensics, love their app watchdog stuff. It started just after I submitted my talk. And I was just like, every time they released some new app and say, oh, there's a password here, there's a password here, I'm like, oh, God, no, I was gonna talk about that at ShmooCon. What are you doing to me? But I think it's really important to get that out in the community. So I'm glad they're doing it. And I, I, do, I did find more than they did, so it's okay. Uh, Wall Street Journal, you've probably heard of this. Um, a lot of private data is being transferred over the air. Um, my talk is more about data at rest. So given the iPhone physically and given the backups physically, what can I get out of it? And People versus Diaz uh, just came out a few weeks ago that uh, pursuant to arrest, officials can now review your cell phone. Who lives in California? Uh, this is my caveats page. Uh, this is third party applications only. I'm not doing any of the native applications. Uh, a lot of forensics research has already been more than done on that. It's, it's old, it's been done. I'm not even gonna touch it with a 10 foot pole. Uh, there's a lot of redaction in this. Um, if you want a clearer picture of what's in being redacted out, I can show you, but, you know, offline. I don't want to protrude this out to everybody. Uh, this presentation has a lot of pictures, and it, there's a lot of slides, so uh, hopefully I won't go over too much. Um, I'm not here to do software validation or uh, ver verification. I'm not here to talk about evidence admissibility, and I'm not here to talk about detailed acquisition techniques. <coughs> Sorry, I'm also giving, getting over a cold, so I will be coughing every once in a while. Also, the party didn't help last night either. Um, so I am losing my voice just a little bit. 
Uh, the state of forensic software right now is that there are a ton of tools for iOS products. Uh, some do certain iOS products, like they only do the iPhones but not the iPad, and some do the, you know, the 3Gs and the original iPhones, but they don't do the 3GSs or the uh, iPhone 4s, and they're so expensive. I mean, I'm talking $5,000 for a piece of software. Um, some of them require the passcode, pass some do not, and most do not auto-magically parse third-party app uh, data. So it's kind of something that you have to do on your own. And there's many proprietary data formats that it comes out to. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's three different ways you can get to the data. There's the backups, which are located on the, uh, the hard drive that you sync the computer with. Um, there could be multiple, um, there could be multiple backups. So you can get almost like a hus historical context, like, a, like snapshots in time, like restore points on uh, Windows. Um, they're usually pretty easy to get to, unless of course they're encrypted. I haven't found a way yet to screw around with encrypted um, backup files. Has anybody here dealt with that at all? Throw a ball? No? Darn, okay, I was hoping that somebody would have come up with a process for that. Um, you get the physical, which is, can be a little bit difficult to capture, but you know, you have to go through processes and software, and it, it can be kind of a pain in the butt, but you get the best data. You can have um, deleted data, you can have um, current data. And logical is just basically what I did. Um, I used one piece of software, which I'll be going over later, that just read a lot of the, uh, the logical data. I was just able to get the SQLite databases and the plist files, which was more than, more than enough for me to work with. I didn't need to even go into the deleted data. Backup locations, if you're interested. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Um, just so you'd recognize the different backup files, these are from uh, iOS 3.x. Um, they seem to change with every variation of the uh, iOS. These are for iOS 4. They change a little bit. Uh, software for backups. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's all right, I don't care. I'm gonna hide behind here anyway. Um, software to be used with backups. Um, these are quick, easy, mostly free software. These are for the iPhone. One is called the iPhone Backup Extractor. Um, it's relatively easy, it's painless, anybody can figure it out. Uh, it's a little crashy, but it'll get the job done. Uh, another one called iPhone Backup Extractor. Same name, yet from what I can tell, different companies. Um, people are not creative with the names, I guess. Um, this one's available for Windows and Linux. Um, the screenshots here are from uh, PC. But as you can see, it gets down to the uh, application level and you can just rip out all the files that you want. And then we have iBackupBot. This one's a Windows only, and again, quick and easy. Um, free trial, if you wanna pay $35, go for it. Um, this one's for physical device. Um, so this might be more on the, on the forensic side of things, so including the forensic software, um, if you want to jailbreak it, you can SSH the whole disk over. Um, you can use other methods, but I'm mostly focusing right now with the commercial non-forensic software. You know, use whatever your agency or your, your group will allow you to use, whatever's easiest for you. Uh, I used phone disk. Um, this product, a little crashy, but I really liked it. Um, you don't technically need the passcode on some devices, but it's 20 bucks and you're, you're in. The one I used for the most part was Phone View. Really like this, you can access most, basically anything that you're gonna wanna access. A lot of the native stuff, a lot of the call logs, the notes, contacts, and all the third party apps, which you can see in the screenshot here. Um, we just did a little quick test outside. Um, it does not work on iPhone 4 if you have a passcode lock. Though it does work with the original, three, uh, the original iPhone, the 3GS, and the iPad. Don't know why it's different on the iPhone 4. If anybody wants to shout out why, I'd really like to know. Dang, that again. Come on, people. Um, these are application directories. I'm not gonna go over each one. Each one has a different purpose. Some are backed up and some are not backed up. Um, this, can be, this can come into play when you're um, acquiring the phone logically. 
This is a quick little screenshot of the applications directory on the phone itself. You can see that the GUIDs are used for each application, so each one of these is a, uh, is a directory. And this is getting into the directory, so you can see that there's the dot app, documents, library, the iTunes artwork is the, um, the icon used on the phone, so if you want a nice real high res version of it, um, there you go. I actually had original, a lot of the original photos or um, icons in my presentation, but the lawyers told me I had to nix those. It was really pretty. I really liked it. The uh, iTunes metadata list. Uh, there's one of these in each app directory. Uh, it contains a lot of the purchase information, the product information, version, um, the Apple account data, and the um, the item ID. So you can use this item ID if you fill it into this URL here to view it on the, um, the itunes.apple.com to find out more information about it if you don't know much about it. Uh, just a couple quick things, good things to know. Um, just So there's a different epoch time used a lot of the time. It's different than the one uh, January 1st, 1970. They tend to use January 1st, 2001. It's called absolute time. So you have to go and translate that in a different way. You see a lot of these in the cookie plist files. Um, there's a variety of tools to use, or you can just add this very large number to your date uh, command. Uh, popular file formats that you'll see are plist files and SQLite databases. Uh, plist files are property lists. They come in either XML or binary. Um, there's a few good tools. Property list editor comes with Xcode. Um, I like it. it works great for me, it's free, it's perfect. Um, on the Windows side, it was a little hard for me to find a good tool, but I came up with iBackupBot. I'd really like to know what other people use. Um, but it gets the job done, but not as pretty. Uh, SQLite databases. Uh, probably everybody's heard of these, everybody's used them. It's just a really easy, uh, simple database. I use SQLite database browser, it's just my personal preference. There's more than, you know, plenty to satisfy anybody's need. Now get on to the good stuff, and let me take a drink first before I lose my voice. <coughs> Sorry, my apologies. Um, so I went through some social networking, um, mainly Facebook first. Um, I could have done a whole presentation on just Facebook. There's so much information to be had. Um, now, of course, everybody's needs are going to be different, so you know, keep that in mind. Uh, the friends.db. Oh, damn, sorry. I'm left-handed. It's not my fault. Um, so friends.db holds all your contacts. Um, you can see that a lot of it's redacted, and I apologize, but I'm sure my friends appreciate it. Um, so it contains the Facebook user ID, uh, first name, last name, the name, the uh, URL to the, um, the little uh, picture icon that you can see in the uh, screenshot here, and the phone and cell and email. I wasn't able to reverse those hashes. Um, I looked on the developer website, but I could not figure out quite how to reverse those. So if you know how, let me know. It's probably really easy, but I couldn't do it. Um, so the friends.db was replaced, um, well, it wasn't replaced. It replaced another file with the UID of the user of the phone. So like my number starts with 114 something 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 dot db. Um, so there's some sort of historical context that you can get from it. But it was upgraded to friends.db. You can take the UID and check out their Facebook profile if you like. This is me exporting the uh, pick square. Um, it's just the icon in the screenshot. Uh, each application has a preferences file, so it's always com.something.something.plist. Um, it usually has the name of the company or the name of the application in it. Uh, it contains a lot of good data, um, some more than others. You kind of have to just look at the app. Um, it's one of the first files I go to to, to find out something about the file. A lot of them contain unencrypted passwords, which is really, really nice. The 
the 320 directory. Uh, 320, from what I understand, I'm not an iPhone developer, mind you, is an open source development library, and I've seen this on a whole variety of different applications. Um, it usually contains profile icons, XML, um, album photos, and miscellaneous pictures. This is an example right here of uh, my profile, I guess. I figured it was okay to use mine. And again, more 320 stuff. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of documents in here. I'm only gonna go over a couple. Um, this is the check-ins activity. So if you wanna do some location stuff, um, there's a lot of coordinates. Um, this is from a friend of mine who just got into Dulles. So I'm able to track where he's at. And FQL is uh, Facebook query language, if anybody's curious. The profile response XML files contain profile data. So everything you see in the screenshot here is basically what it contains. And FQL result is the, uh, you know, um, again, the Facebook query language, but this one is for an event. So Rally to Restore Insanity was one of the, one of the events I attended, so that's naturally in there too. And stream post, it contains all your stream, all your friends' data. Photo response contains all the uh, photos and album information. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but it gets a little boring after a while if you're not bored already. Well, LinkedIn was a nice app because it does contain a lot of uh, good contact information. A lot of good contact information. Um, <coughs> sorry. So here we can see uh, a bunch of date and times. Um, as a forensic investigator, I like to do some timeline analysis. Uh, so I, if I can see when a user was using the app, um, maybe I can relate that back to something on the hard drive that they were doing or something that perhaps surveillance did something. Um, you know, it depends on the investigation. Um, this user key right here, um, you can see it contains what looks like a hex data. That can be extracted into this. Um, it's just a binary plist that contains member ID and, and the email that the account was signed up to. There's a bunch of files with connections underscore uh, the member, um, member ID, so whatever number there is, which contains so much information. Every one of the contacts on LinkedIn will have basic information, so name, title, location, email address, and member ID for each of your contacts. Uh, this file is a bit deprecated because now they have indi individual plists for each LinkedIn user, which makes my life a lot easier so I can go directly to the user that I'd like to go to. That's shown here. So each one of these member.plists are each user in your LinkedIn. Uh, some of these plists contain more information than others. So if you recently looked at a, um, looked at a contact, they're going to have more information downloaded to it. So, this one is one that I viewed recently. So it has basically everything in my LinkedIn profile, education, job history, descriptions, uh, email, groups, everything. And this one is one that is just a basic overview of what, uh, of what was downloaded. So I didn't view this one recently, but it has a good amount of information in it. So name, email address, member ID. Each network update in your little stream thing is a plist file. Um, the ones with the PROF in them contain profile updates. The ones with PICU contain picture updates. And the one with I UNIU, yes, UNIU contain um, user updates and shared items. Um, contains, there's so much information, it's just ridiculous. I wish I could just do a whole presentation on it. Um, the ones with just the member ID contains stuff like, um, oh, I've updated a phone number that, you know, today's my birthday or, you know, the address type stuff. Um, this, particular, this file contains um, a table called Buzz Topic. I didn't even know what Buzz Topic was until I started doing this. I'm like, I have not even seen this. But apparently it's a direct Twitter implementation to go and view contents of your previous employment and your previous schools. 
And of course, it has all your messages. So all your direct messages, all your group messages, it's contained in there. And it's got a, quite a good history, too. It's got um, you know, everything that was archived. If somebody sent you an invite, or you know, somebody wants to be your contact, they're all in there. Another table in the same database uh, contains some of the other same information, member IDs, pictures, last names, and, and their little headline. Um, this one is particularly for the, um, the members that you've messaged in the past. And another 320 directory. So I looked at some shopping and financial apps. Amazon was nice enough to uh, keep the email um, unencrypted. Um, you know, okay, it's just the email, it's not a password, but still, you can, you can use that for some good information. Um, you can also see how many times the application was started or, you know, the last search terms. You know, maybe somebody was searching for Schmooball or something, I don't know. Chase app. Uh, Via Forensics pretty much covered this, but uh, I'm going to cover it again just for good measure. Um, they do keep the um, username in there in unencrypted format. And item five down there, that is what I believe is the last login for the user of the application. <coughs> Mint. Um, who here uses Mint? On your iPhone? Not on my iPhone. Okay, well. Um, okay, so I found a ton of financial information from it. Uh, no, you know, no account numbers, no credit card numbers, um, but I can see all the transactions. I can see the date they posted. I can see the amounts. And down in the, the lower, um, the last screenshot down at the bottom, I can even see the location in some instances. So, I mean, this one I can easily locate just doing a quick Google search for this rest in store, and I know where you've been. Um, it gives me a good date, gives me a good location, and how much you spent. Um, it does also give me account names, which, you know, depending on how the names are used, you know, if it's called American Express, I know you have an American Express card, and that you owe $109 on it, for instance. Uh, and it puts it in a really nice database for you, which I think is great. Easy to extract. E-Trade, uh, don't worry, they only keep your username. Um, I couldn't get it to keep its password. I don't have a login for it, but um, even with a no login, it just it keeps the username in the clear. So eBay, um, I can see your last hundred searches. I can see your preferred uh, payment system. <coughs> I can see your username and postal code. Postal code. So if I, you know, if I get an iPhone from say, the bar, and you know, I can get a lot of good information from it. Um, just I, Even your Twitter username, wh why does eBay have your Twitter username? I, I don't understand why, but it also has you know, user ID. That could be uh, handy in some instances. Ah, PayPal. Um, it does show the, um, what's called the secure merchant account ID, which can be used to send money to a person or request money from a person. Um, and it also shows, you know, your email, your last login date, your <laughs> most recent payer ID. Um, you know, if you want to send money, my email address is up there. I highly appreciate it. Maybe I can start the Android project after that with the funds. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this particular field contains all the. Uh, user information, so email, whether it's a premier account, whether, you know, username, last name, you, you know, U.S. dollars, United States, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Uh, item 12 that's redacted is the street address, and item 17 below that is the secure merchant account ID. <coughs> oh, hopefully I can make it through this. Uh, page one, personal finance. Anybody use this? It's kind of a, a sort of obscure kind of app, but uh, I kept it for analysis because I thought it was really interesting. Uh, this just kind of shows you, I have two versions up here. It kind of shows you the difference between versions. 
So first version I was analyzing. Okay, it's got the um, all your account details, um, credit card number, well, last four of your credit card number, excuse me, and transactions, uh, balance, a lot of the stuff that you can still see from Mint. So I think it's really good information to have. But in the next couple versions up, everything's encrypted, or at least I don't know how to get to it. <coughs> so it's nice to see that somebody's working towards this. Gmail apps, um, I looked at a lot of shady type Gmail apps just to see uh, what kind of stuff, it <coughs> excuse me. just to see what kind of things it held. I mean, I just, I just assumed it would hold all your Gmail messages and stuff like that. Because <coughs> you can see here it's um, unencrypted email address, unencrypted password, twice, for good measure. <laughs> um, I, okay, I mean, all right. I mean, your Gmail account and your password. Um, Go ahead, log into it. But in case you can't log into it due to law enforcement reasons, it's not right to do, um, it stores all your information right in the database. <coughs> I really apologize for this coughing. Uh, another one, basically the same thing. Right there, username and password unencrypted. Um, I, I see no reason that they can't encrypt it. There's got to be a way to do it. I know I'm not a developer, but I mean, there's got to be a way, right? Yeah. Okay. Touch term, does anybody use that? SSH into your boxes at home. Do you ever use the save password field? I hope not. Um. <coughs> okay. So. It saves your last connections. I can see a history of it. Um, if your pass safe password is enabled, I can see that as well. I can see the username that you, or not, excuse me, the username, the host, and tons of other information. <coughs> and conveniently enough, I can see when you last connected, which is uh, convenient. Anonymous web browser, I had to, I just had to give this one a try. It sounds so shady. Um, described on the iTunes store as, it, you know, it does not leave any trace, not traceable history of where you, you, where you want on the web browser. It states that you don't have to clear your cache, your cookies, your history. Um, also has the ability to, to, to take uh, screenshots of a page if you, quote, like that picture so much and want to save it as your background. You can kind of see what kind of type of people might be using this. Um, this the, the Wachovia is one of the screenshots. Um, just to give you an example, I'm sure somebody else could take a screenshot of something else far different than that. But the cookies.plus clearly shows that I went to Bank of America, Wachovia.com, and Google.com. Now, it doesn't say what I did there or where I visited, but it gives you a very good idea. It also has this database that uh, stores a little bit of the fragments from the internet history. So <coughs> I went to Google and looked up kittens. I figure I don't want anybody letting, you know, let anybody know that I'm searching for kittens, no. Um, I can definitely see that I went there and I searched for kittens. Quick password manager, oh, I loved, I loved this one. Um, it, it, really, it couldn't make it any easier for me, seriously. So this one's described as a quick, simple, and effective, effective password manager. It's exact words off the website. There's the passcode. <laughs> I mean, it, can't, it doesn't get easier than this. Um, the password's a little bit lower down the line there. Um, well, 3133 user is my uh, fake username. But the password is sort of encrypted. So I'm like, okay, well, I got the passcode. I can easily log in. Um, so either you can transfer that plist file to a different phone, 
or you can you know, just log in on the device. Doesn't matter, it works either way. Um, so logged in using the passcode and now you can see all my username and passwords. Those are fake, obviously. <laughs> Mobile RSS is actually, it's, it's one of my favorite RSS reader apps, but I, I'm thinking I gotta change. Um, now I've become a little bit more uh, security conscious now, so now I don't find an app for usability, now I find it that it's just unsecure. So I'll use an unsecure or a more secure app with a crappier usability because it just makes sense now. Um, I didn't, now I didn't test this one, but as you can see here, it has either delicious username and passwords, instant paper username and passwords, Reddit, re read it or read it later, I can't really tell, and Twitter username and password. Um, maybe it's in the clear, maybe it's not. My guess is that it probably is. Um, if you go to this database here, it's my password and my Gmail account in the clear. Because um, I'm obviously using uh, Google RSS Reader. And again, just for good measure, the account password again. It's, in, it's some of these places, they're in so many locations, it's just, it's ridiculous after a while. If you can't find it in one, go to another. <coughs> uh, open table. Everybody likes open table, right? You like to find your reservations, look at your, you know, see where you're going out tonight, see where you're going for the weekend. Anybody use it? Anybody, nobody's gonna admit anymore, okay. Um, right there, username and password. It can't get more clear than that. It, it does give you a history of um, the restaurants you visited, uh, you've looked up their profiles. It doesn't necessarily say you ate there or not, but you know, it's, it's good information either way. Blogging apps, I found these to be of particular interest. Tumblr, um, uh, more unencrypted passwords and emails. Uh, screenshot, I mean, screenshot just shows you, hey, there's my username and password, but it's really being stored too. And you know, if you're curious, not just of passwords and usernames, there's a link there for my avatar to have a speaker. Um, it's better than this mug right here. And it's pretty, more, pretty nerdy enough. But um, item 24 is the email address. Um, I have notes here for what I redacted, because I know you guys can't tell what item 17 is. Um, item 11 is the title of the blog. Um, item 8 is the password. Item 18 and 19 are the URL for the blog, so you know, whatever.tumblr.com. It's also nice that it uh, stores your draft texts or draft text posts. Um, and there's also one with the photos in it. So you can see the little blue dot means I have a draft waiting. And it conveniently tells me the, you know, the subject and the content matter that it's holding. WordPress. <sighs> item 21 is the username. Um, item 22 is the blog ID. So we have the blog URL in there as well as the blog name and, uh, and other information. <clears throat> the comment one archive is obviously a comment. Um, so it'll store all your comments. It'll also store all your posts. So it's good information to have if you, you know, maybe stole somebody's iPhone or are examining it for a legitimate purpose. And for good measure, another password. It, seriously, it gets old after a while. You start, start seeing passwords everywhere. You can just run into any application these days and see an unencrypted password. Though it does appear that they fixed it in version 261, otherwise it was, Maybe maybe a uh, human error on me that I didn't put it in correctly, but it seems to have been fixed. Travel websites are always good for you know locational data. TripIt, I use TripIt. Um, I really like TripIt. It's very convenient to use. But now you know if somebody steals my iPhone, they can see where I've been. Um, perhaps I don't care. Perhaps I do. You know, it's it's all up to the individual user. You can see my screen name in there. If you extract this particular URL, you can see a whole, you know, lovely XML 
RSS listing of where I've been and different alerts that it's given me. You can see who I've traveled with. The giant block there is my traveler companion, though I figure he probably won't want me to post his name up there. Uh, frequent traveler number, that might be handy, you never know. And a whole database. Basically, this is the itinerary it pulls in. Um, so it has the duration, the, you know, where I'm going to, what I'm flying, uh, even has seat names, airports, locations. It, it could be really good information. It's all up to the different person. Uh, Navigon, this is one of the only apps that I actually purchased. Um, everything else I tried to keep free because I figure everybody's pretty much using free apps. But I already, I've already had this one purchased, so I want to take a look at it. So it stores your you know, boring program preferences. You know, do I want audio? Do I want speed warnings? Do I want traffic? Eh, OK. Um, but it also stores my last position and angle. That could be pretty useful. Uh, it also stores you know, the last Google search string I had and the last city name that I uh, looked up. This document uh, stores my last search d uh, result data. Now, it's not in the prettiest format here, right? Um, there's no good way to really translate this, but if you just copy it to another phone using the tools that I looked at before, you can make it really pretty like this. So this is my favorites right here. Um, and it's much easier to read on the right side than it is the left side. So I prefer that translation. And you have recent targets as well. Foursquare. Um, I know a lot of people use Foursquare. I don't really. So, but I'm like, well, you know, it is a locational thing. You can, you know, check into wherever. It might be, you know, some people are when if you use it, you're pretty much obsessed with it, as it turns out, and you just track people by it. So there's whole databases. I mean, this this one is. I checked into one of the locations. I checked in at Jay Gilbert's. Uh, very good stakes if you're looking for a good steak around town. Um, so it doesn't give you the exact location of where you're at, but you, it gives you a good um, generic location of where you've been in the past. So you can see that I was in San Francisco for a while, I was in Virginia, I was in, uh, let's see, McLean. Uh, it also shows a lot of your buddies. Um, the one, I only have one contact, it's my sister. Um, I only have one contact, so I had to redact that out, but uh, you can see that I am friends with her. So if you have more than one contact, obviously the list is going to be populated much more than mine is. And you feel free to take the user ID into that URL and find out more information, depending on what settings they have. <coughs> Documents and files. Um, Love these. Um, you can get a ton of personal documents, everything that you sync with Evernote, right on the phone. So if you favorited it, it's on the phone no matter what. Um, not, not every document that's in your Evernote will be on the phone, just the ones that you recently synced or recently you know, viewed and downloaded will be on there. Um, and it does show your, your username and it does show you um, coordinates. I don't know why it shows you coordinates. I don't know why Evernote needs to interface with a map, but you can get coordinates out of it. And shown here, the screenshot is the, the maps and the notes that I uploaded at a certain area. So that's the coordinate. OK, so there's coordinates along with notes. Um, it also stores the incoming email. So say you have somebody's phone, you want to send them things like, maybe overburden their Evernote account. Now you have their email to do that with. Um, these, these, each one, um, each folder that has a different GUID stores a different note. So the one with HTML, that starts with 4C6, obviously has a GIF embedded within it. Also contains a um, like an, a, a log, so I can see when the last sync was or what note was synced last. I don't know if it gets overwritten over a certain period of time. I would assume it does, but it's also it just it's good information for a temporal analysis. 
this database was huge. It stored every single piece of metadata ever on each Evernote note that you took. Um, I really couldn't do it justice by a screenshot, so I just extracted this, the, this information. And more metadata in this, uh, in this particular database. Dropbox, another one of my favorite apps. Uh, contains a lot of the other documents. Very similar to Evernote in that it stores it um, within the caches slash Dropbox. So I can go into the iPhone and just get that document. But it's similar in that if you haven't viewed it recently or if you haven't um, favorited the file, it's not going to be in there. But you can find traces of files in there. So these are the favorites. You can see in the right box here that it gives you a ton of meta metadata. Um, the file name, the how, you know, how big it is, what revision it's at, and what type of uh, file it is. This is the uh, default account Dropbox from the previous one was extracted, the DB with the arrow there, which can give you account information. So this is the consumed bytes versus the total bytes. This is out of a two gig account and more information on favorite files. And cache.db holds a lot of the information. It contains uh, base64 content, but when you extract it, it goes into a binary plist, which once you extract that, can get into a JSON type file, which can be you know, viewed easily using your favorite JSON converter. And more metadata. More metadata again and even more. Uh, another interesting app, um, I'd say it's pretty shady. I don't use this on a normal basis, definitely research only. Uh, this one was described as a, uh, provides perfect security for your private photos. <laughs> I just, I just go and read the descriptions of some of these places. You're just like, oh God, really? It just, ugh. Just creepy people out there. So this application uses a password password to store, you know, keep your photos safe. Um, though on disk, you can easily just get to it. It's it's right there. Um, that's a picture of my sister's dog. It's kind of cute. Um, so <laughs> it's not even it's not even difficult. Uh, but if you do want the password, if you're just dying for the password, right there in the database file. Also, it keeps coordinates for some reason. Don't know why, as it's private. Twitter accounts, oh, these are my favorites. I would say a good amount of people use Twitter in this room. I, I hope I'm safe to, you know, safe to say that. Um, I used a lot of the free apps, um, so I, I just chose the most popular. I literally went and see, like, what are the top Twitter apps? top free Twitter apps, because I'm not going to pay much money for these. Um, so I went to Echofon. Um, password, right next to secret key. Um, and username, I mean, username and the user ID. So feel free, go sign into Twitter, or whoever's Twitter account this may be. And naturally, it stores a database of all your Twitter information. Uh, there's a user's table that you can get con good contact information out of. Um, it was far, much too large to show a screenshot of, but you can get you know your followers, your retweets. It's not necessarily people you know, but people that's like been retweeted and their followers. And it's just a huge database. Uh, you find their avatar, and you can go and look at their Twitter status if you know logging into their account is not good enough for you. Uh, it saves your searches, saves your direct messages, and also saves your cookies. Um, almost every application I've talked about has some sort of cookies.plist file. Um, you guys know more than I will of, of how to 
use that or exploit that. Um, saves it in great format for you. So go for it. Hootsuite. You can interface Hootsuite with a variety of other social networking uh, apps like Twitter, Facebook, and Foursquare. And do you think it saves its passwords? All of them in the clear. Um, at some point, this is just unacceptable. There is no reason this many passwords should be on an iPhone. And we never use passwords for the same thing, right? The same password for the same thing. Never. Uh, it has a recent contacts list, also a recent searches list. Twitterific. Another password. Another database. All the stuff. It's, it's really the same thing over and over and over. I really, I don't want to bore you, but I feel like I should just prove it to you. And uh, recent searches. And more database stuff. There's so much information. Again, TweetDeck. Saves your information into different databases. You know, you can get whatever tweets were just last written up there. And, you know, not to be lost with the other ones, but your username and password in the clear. Uh, I looked at Skype. Skype was nice that it interfaced really well with a lot of the desktop apps. Um, as you can see here, if you look at Skype on your Mac, you're going to see a lot of the same files, which is convenient because I was able to just extract all these files and put them in through my desktop app to read all of them makes it so easy for me. Um, so here, this is just a screenshot of me copying the folder over, just to say this one's from the phone to this one's on the desktop. And you can read all the information. So you can see a lot of the profile information. You can see a lot of the history information, so text chats and, and call logs. Very easy to see. Um, there's even some Windows tools. I haven't used these, so I can't attest to how well they are. But um, they also will parse the, these uh, .db logs. And uh, I believe this is the last app, so if you're getting bored, don't worry. Um, you know, some people don't use AIM anymore, some people do. But if you do, just be aware it stores your password. Um, it also stores all your last chats, it stores your username, stores, you know, dates. It even, you know, it inter now it interfaces with your Gmail and Facebook, so, yeah, it probably stores that, too. And there's chat history in a nice format if you want to go parse it really nicely. So, last slide, wrapping up. There is a ton of personal information on your, on your, uh, on your iPhones, your iPads, all your iOS devices. Uh, I just want you to be aware that there is that much information on there, and if somebody does have physical access to it, they can get it. It might be a little difficult for them, but it is possible that they can get it. Um, if you're a developer, I'd like to see you use more encrypted passwords. Um, if you are a bad guy, um, well, go nuts. I mean, it's right there for you. It's just, it's really just asking you to go write an exploit for it or write something to get that information. Um, though I'm not condoning that for the record, but as a forensic analyst, it's good for me too. Uh, you know, as a user, it's, it's a catch-22. As a user, I don't want to share that information. As a forensic analyst, I want to see that information. So as long as it's not my phone, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Questions? Like the passcode, you mean? Yeah. Are you talking just the the passcode? Yeah. Are you talking about like the wiping the utility? Like the Did you the oh yeah, he's asking. I believe he's asking how a passcode is. Uh, you know, helps. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
how, how does the passcode protect the device? Um, as I tested, I was able to, with the passcode on, able to get to the data that I all just looked at on an original iPhone, a 3GS, and an iPad. With the passcode on, no problem. Um, I just tested one out in the hallway before this presentation on iPhone 4. That one was fine. Um, I was not able to get that. Hmm? It was protected. Um, so unless you have the passcode, you weren't able to get into that. But that was only with the one piece of software, phone view, was what I was using. So whether or not the other software does that, I don't know. Um, uh, I tested it on other people's phones. So I grabbed my husband's phone and tested it with that too, and it seemed to work just fine. And not that I'm aware of. He has his stuff, I have my stuff. Um, so I just worked on the line. What's the average length of time actually when you connect the device to pull the data? You know, like, to, like you make a, a in, in bulk? Um, you not to download the whole phone, not to copy the phone, but when you're actually interfacing with it. I, I take his phone, and I try it out, pull it, and be like, oh, I found your phone, dude. Sorry, you left it on the floor. You give it back to him. Yeah. Well, it depends on the amount of apps and the amount of storage. So if you just want to like go after one of the Twitter apps, 30 seconds. I mean, just plug it in, plug and play, basically, and just get that, get the plist file, you know, find the application, get the plist file, open it up, there it is. So let me take this one over here. I didn't test that fully, and I, I really should have, um, but as Sorry, my bad. Um, he's asking whether the save passcode checkbox, if I uncheck that, whether it actually saved the password or not. Um, I tended to use the default options, except for, I believe for a touch term, because I wanted to see if it actually would save the password, and it did. So more testing would be required for that. Right. That would definitely be something to ask more of the developer. Yes, there is. Okay. Yes, there is. All right. There is no Apparently. <laughs> Along that line, did you find any apps that were actually using all the right stuff? Oh, yeah. There's, there's plenty out there. Don't worry. Um, but I just put all the good stuff in this one. Anyone? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'll, I'll get to this half eventually. You want to go again? No, I didn't really look at it from that perspective. Um, you know, it's sandboxed, so in theory, it's not supposed to, but maybe you guys can come up with something. Yeah, no, I, di I didn't investigate that. Sorry. Last pass? No. I can. You have it on your phone? <laughs> I'm always looking for volunteers. I can only do so many apps at a time. Oh, I am supposed to be wrapping this up. Uh, thank you very much. If you have questions, come see me later.